and welcome to a bonus edition of BaxiCam. Now with the recent launch of the Baxi 800 Heat, you might remember a few weeks back I did a little video asking you guys and girls to send your questions in. Now we've had a few questions come our way, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to recap over the features and the benefits of the boiler, and I'm also going to stick the GoPro on my head. We're going to have a look inside and see what's going on. So let's get cracking! Okay then guys and girls, we'll make a start. So the Baxi 800 heat range is available in 16 kilowatt, 25 and 30. And it comes with a 10 year warranty. You're gonna get an 80 micro 2 filter in the box to prevent your system getting dirty. So you don't need a pump overrun and you don't need a permanent live on this boiler. So it makes wiring an absolute doddle. The first thing you might notice about the boiler is how small it is. So from top to bottom, it's 625mm, it's 370 wide and it's 270 deep. So that'll fit in a standard kitchen cupboard with plenty of room for, uh, I don't know, a, a multi-pack of toilet rolls or something like that. So just to uh, discuss your fluid options, you can go vertically, you can go horizontal top and you can also go in case rear flu. So if we have a look at the, uh, the user controls interface on the bottom, uh, you can see that it's, um, you know, there's your little boiler stat, there's your reset button and your chimney sweep button there. Um, so what we'll do, we'll, um, we'll strip it down and have a look and see what's going on inside. So normally you'd have two screws in there, so you take the two screws out and you can drop down your user interface tray there. Right then, now we can see the condensed trap and the gas isolation valve as well. You've got a pressure test point on there, so when you're commissioning, or doing a service on it, it makes uh, life easier to do your working pressure test from there. Um, next we'll take out these two screws here, we don't need to take them out all the way. And then we can just pop these two down, and then pull the case towards us. Now these boilers are unbelievably quiet. So you've got your insulation panel on the back there. So, but when these boilers are operating, they, uh, they barely sound like they're on. Right, let's take off the, uh, the air box here. So, that makes the boiler even quieter as well. And next what we'll do, we'll grab our flue tube. So all we need to do is pop that catch up, pull him towards us, take him out, pop him down. Next we'll remove the bus connector, which connects the main circuit board to the, uh, the user interface there. And then we can pop this panel down. This is your switch live neutral and earth connection. Like I said earlier, you don't need a pump over on or permanent live. Remove the ribbon connector there, take off the earth wire and the spark. Uh, so that's your circuit board, there's your fan in the middle. Uh, get in there, right, turn the gas off. So if I undo the little union there, obviously you'd need a spanner normally. Uh, you're not going to find any special fibre washers in there at all, so it's just a 22mm a fibre washer. Next what I want to do is just pull these two lugs towards me. So if you're doing a service on one of these boilers, then um, you know, this is basically what you'd be doing to remove the, the burner, because it's it's an absolute piece of cake if you want to do that. So that is your combustion control unit, that is. So that is your printed circuit board, there's your fan, and it's got a six sigma gas valve on. So we can pop into one side for now. And now all we're really left with is, uh, well there's the burner. Um, so we don't have an issue with that burner seal. So that's a similar burner seal uh, that it is on the uh, the 800 combis, the 600s, the Durotex and the Platinums. Uh, so we don't mind you stripping these down on a service because we don't have any issues with those. Um, now all you can really see is the heat exchanger, uh, a couple of sensors and an overheat stat. So the overheat stat is in a dry pocket. So if you ever needed to change him in the future, uh, you just wind him out. Uh, you don't need to drain down for that. Uh, flow temperature sensor at the top here. Again, that's in a dry pocket, so if you need to change him in the future, uh, you just wind him, wind him out. No, no need to drain down. And the same with your return temperature sensor. So that's why we don't need a flow switch on this one, because we've got return uh, and, a, and a flow sensor there. Um, when you're doing your safe isolation as well, there's a little test point for you there. Uh, you've got a brass drain off, uh, so if you ever need to drain it down, there's a, a really good brass drain off there for you. Automatic air vent uh, in the top right hand corner. Uh, and it's uh, an aluminium heat exchanger, uh, so you don't, I, I wouldn't go pouring white vinegar down there, just uh, if you're going to clean that, nothing more than a, a bit of water to be perfectly honest. And then uh, what you can do then, when you've done that, when you've flushed it through, if you just take your condensed trap off, uh, and then you can wash your condensed trap out and, 
uh, you're back to normal then filling back up okay and guys and girls so uh, i hope you found the video useful and uh, i hope you're staying safe and your families are doing well until next time take care <laughs>